Hi guys, so today we're going to take a look at what is a map and how to understand a map. A map is drawn from a bird's eye view looking down on an area. It's taking the real world and shrinking it down onto a bit of paper and that's done to an exact scale in the way that it shrinks from the real world down onto the map paper. As part of that shrinking process, we need to be able to eliminate a lot of clutter that would go in the map, so therefore we use map symbols and map abbreviations. Let's take a look at some of these map symbols and abbreviations on the large training map that I have here. This wouldn't be the type of map we would take out in the ground, it's just a map that we've had enlarged and able to ease the learning at this stage. Let's take a look. So let's take a look at some of the easier map symbols first. First of all, we have these blue peas. There's quite a few of them in this map and they're around the border of the map because the main part of the map is for a country park. So these car parks are on the perimeter of that to allow you to park up for the day and head onto the hills. Next, we have a phone symbol here, marking a telephone box within a village. We have a blue boot up here to mark that there's walking trails starting from that area. We have a blue flag, which is a golf course. The letter CH, so an abbreviation instead of a symbol. The letter CH, telling us it's a clubhouse. Another abbreviation down here, we have the letters PC, standing for public convenience, which is the toilet. A handy thing to know. Trees, forestry is marked by colour, self-explanatory colour. Green areas here are forestry. But there's a tree symbol inside that which tells you whether it's a coniferous or a deciduous forest, or a mix of both. Staying on colours being self-explanatory, we have blue sections here, which is going to be water. This is a reservoir, it could be a loch, lake, etc. The blue lines flowing into it are streams or rivers, depending on their thickness. We have roads dictated by colour, for instance an A road here is, is green. We have some villages marked by brown rectangles and squares. Inside we have, across the hills, a lot of these single dashed lines. These are the walking tracks that we'll probably head on when we head out and about on the hills for the day. A single track marked by a single dashed line. Change to that is we have a double dashed line up here. We would expect we could still walk along that. The only difference would be you expect it to be wider and perhaps an all-terrain vehicle, a 4x4 type vehicle, could drive on it as well. But again, deciding where, what we could walk on to head into the hills, a single track or double track is probably the, the main ones that we're going to see on the map to follow. Other things are these browny orange lines here. These are called contour lines and we'll have a chat about that later on. Contour lines is what tells us what's uphill and what's downhill, which is really good to know. So guys, map symbols, mainly self-explanatory to, to figure out what they mean. If you come across a map symbol or abbreviation, you don't know what it is. You can refer to your map, every large map as a key or a legend, which would tell you what every symbol and every abbreviation actually means inside it. 